Howdy folks, Flight Tim Dev here. After three failed attempts at this video, I think I've got it pretty well right. <laughs> um, for some reason, the other videos, they just went out of lippy sync after about 20 minutes of recording. So I've decided to just make it as short as I possibly can and as quick as I possibly can to do it under 10 minutes because after that, it starts to be prob problematic. And if it does go over that, I'll just cut the video and then splice it here and there. Okay. In this video today, we're going to be talking about um, Ortho 4 XP and how uh, you should set it up, how you can set it up, and etc. etc. Um, this is the program here that I'm talking about. This is version 1.30. I'll leave links in the description where you can download the one I'm using and then uh, the original. Uh, if I can find the link to the web, I will. In this particular box, you got latitude and longitude of whichever area that you did last, but if you didn't do it last, then that may be blank. Uh, the type of imagery you're using, now you can have Arc, Bing, you can use Google, here maps if you've got registration there, uh, Mapbox. Mapbox tends to be more up-to-date imagery, but a little bit milky in the coloring. Google tends to be pretty old in the imagery, probably four or five years old, but very clear and sharp when you get close to the ground. Bing is patchwork, it's all over the place, it's willy-nilly, sometimes you'll have good scenery, sometimes bad, but it tends to have clouds all over the, um, the images that it captures, and Arc tends to be a bit like Bing, and I'm sure they show it. So for this particular video, I'm just going to... I'm just going to use Google Earth, okay? This is this box here, primarily these numbers here, control anything around the area that you're doing. So say you're doing an airport, say Brisbane Airport. I'll use that in this example here. Say Brisbane Airport. Well, you'll get a, uh, a zoomed up close version of Brisbane Airport. That's the one you'll be working on making your photo reel and so forth and uh, making you, your models and so forth for that photo reel. And then anything around the airport will be this here. So you don't want to really go anything above about 14 for this. Okay, uh, you go into your settings, you change all your settings to what you like. I've got this pretty much set to how I like it. Like any inland water here, um, it's 0.001, you might as well say zero. Um, from, from zero to 10 square kilometers, anything, you know, larger than that. Uh, it'll then mask or anything between zero and ten square kilometers or area of ten square kilometers it'll mask in water and anything above ten obviously it'll mask that as well uh, you can do inland mask you can turn that on turn that off it doesn't matter because it's it's set here smoothing I find 32 is excellent for this program uh, curvature of 1.5 is excellent I'm not too sure what the originals were because I don't use the original much uh, and mask this number here has to match this number here. So if that's 13, set this to 13. If it's 12, set that to 12 and so on and so forth. So your masks line up correctly. Once you've set this, don't write to uh, configuration file because if you've made changes and the changes don't work, you can't go back if you've written your configuration file. So don't, don't write it, just hit apply and okay or exit. Hit your little globe up here and then go to the area that you want. Now, in this case, I was doing for the last video, I was doing Brisbane here. So you just double click to activate your box and then holding the shift key, select the middle. When it's brown like that, it's selected, okay? Uh, set top, select the top four and the bottom one. Now, we're not gonna go into the configuration file and set up resample because we don't want this program to actually compile it. All we want this program to do is to download the images and to download the OpenStreetMap um, information like roads, shorelines, trees, houses, whatever you've got in there. So when you so use scenery proc later on, and I've got a video about scenery proc on my channel, so just have a look at that. Um, that'll tell you how to use scenery proc. Uh, I had a few problems in that, so I'll probably do another video on that. Uh, later on now that I've got flight sim and everything installed. I didn't have it installed when I did that video shame on me But yeah, so uh, Once you've got this selected you can either hit batch build or I would prefer you to select the magnifying glass You've got the area selected. We've got Google Earth being selected here So you want to get close up and personal with it uh, Because we're using Google Earth use Google Earth in here as well. The maximum zoom is 13. So don't try to 
go any higher because you can't and you can't get into there and make it higher because the program will crash don't worry i've tried and you can see it's not up to date but in here if you use Mapbox, you can see once once i've done it so you've got map box here and map box there right so you hit map box and you'll watch what happens here so you can see you can't zoom in on this but you can see it's got the parallel runway here it's got all the taxiways everything is made so this image is pretty recent probably within the last 12 months where google would be three or four years old still right now the airport that mark riggs and myself made back in 2009 had uh, the parallel runway and the terminal and everything was built because it was just images that were available so in this case i would use mapbox to get um, the taxiways and what it looks like and then go back to google earth to get the imagery uh, that's a bit stuffing around but for this i'm just going to use google for now so you can see it's using google up here you can see it's you watch this it'll disappear so you can see that looks crap right but the imagery close to the ground will look good if it's reasonable reasonably close to map box let's have a look at the coloring here see how much it changes yeah it changes quite a bit so yeah I, I, I'd probably myself use map box even if it is a bit so 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 use map box get a zoom level of 18 now if you hold down the left control and then your left mouse you'll get a box now you want for an area something like this you probably want six wide and six down i like to make it all nice and even so six boxes and select all of those and then if you want to get rid of it just right click right mouse click and holding the control key won't do anything if you don't hold it down so left mouse and left control or right control doesn't matter and then um, just do this right and keep doing this and then let go of everything and then just use your right mouse and drag around so that's that so you, you're getting all this you probably don't want that section so you get rid of that one um, and I don't know how much of the waterway you want here whether you want to go around this little bit of um, whatever that is uh, you might not want these ones here you might not want this you might cut it right right on the little bit of the uh, I don't know man-made island I suppose this is where the the boat stock and so forth and they've got cranes on the side so you might want to cut that really close and you don't want this bit but if you do want that bit put these two boxes here if you don't want it well that's probably going to miss out a very very small amount there so i would leave that one in uh, obviously you're going to need everything else now if you want a little bit more here you can take a little bit more here just by doing that but it's up to you i mean it, it this will end up being a square box so in the end you'll have to transition this anyway when you're doing your color matching and transition this if you if you don't want the water then you can cut it right on the water line there but you're still going to be um, doing a lot of water work on this one i don't like airports with water so i don't tend to do these um yeah so that's basically what i would take then you hit save zone apply and exit now it'll go back to this screen right so this screen don't worry about that screen minimize that don't worry about the dos box that's more to do with xplane don't close the dos box it'll actually close the program and then you've got this program all you do now is hit batch build or yeah batch build then you can go back to your previous box you'll find this doesn't do anything and that's just how it is you know uh it'll be all working in this one here now the first thing it will do is to download osm data because i've already got this osm data it'll it'll use it again um, but if you don't have this osm data it'll actually download it now sometimes and it happens more often than not but sometimes when you're downloading this osm data it'll fail try again fail try again fail try again and it'll keep doing that for however long it takes to download it uh, and you can see it's recycling the data that I've got. Some of the data it won't recycle, okay? Uh, and you just gotta make sure in this one you don't have any errors here, like building the vector data. If it has an error there, then you might wanna download the vector data. You know, just hit that one or that one. Um, and yeah, basically let, let it download. It will download the images, it'll download the masks. You will have to edit the masks because they're not accurate. Um, and you will have to add well the mask will be reasonably accurate it's just a lot of the mask will be cut off 
uh, so you'll have to make a mask for it for resample later on. Um, I've got I've got another video on there how to combine all the INF files or INI files. You'll get something sort of like see if I can find one. Um, games also there it is also this is the one I'm using also photos I don't know if I've got any photos in here no I deleted it I don't know about the mask Del delete the mask let's have a look here so your mask will go into here and I don't know if I deleted them yes I did so it's not up to there yet it's doing the OSM data so it's downloading it here so you'll have these ones here which I tend to uh, decompress and then put them into their own uh, so just extract them here just like that and you can delete them if you want but keep them there and then you'll have another directory here that'll have this OSM data so that'll be for your airports all the various stuff around your airports or the roads or your coastlines and your waterways and so forth a lot of this data doesn't get used uh, that'll be downloading in this you'll find it here it'll be downloading here somewhere uh, so any missing photos it'll find the photos so now it's doing the, the surrounding images so these will be in here so Google Earth 14 these are the small ones let's have a look at oh I don't want to use Photoshop let's use something else eh? Earth and view so that's what it looks like the surrounding areas you can see it's very patchwork here um, but you can see the quality is reasonable for 14 it's not bad because it's around the airport so it'll be the when you're descending into landing uh, this will be what you see okay so this will be all compiled as one BGL and then you'll have another one compiled as another BGL so we just go through them you can see the water is all crappy there you're cutting that away anyway that's that's um, what's that one probably straight broke island or one of them uh, you can see this is the this is where the airport is this will be in all high resolution so you're not worried about the quality because it'll be replaced with another BGL file that you'll make so you're not really worried about that but you still get it right so as as this BGL will be in charge until you get to the resolution of the second BGL so we for this one we used Google Earth but the other one we used Mapbox so it's down here somewhere Oh, it's not done it yet so these are just the surrounding ones and there's the map box 18 so you can see how many there are and the reason you don't want it in the configuration file to compile it it's because that every single one of these will be a single BGL file and you don't want that many BGL files what have we got 16 BGL files so we don't want them so what there's another video I've done just recently it tells you how to combine these and using a little macro recorder to um, to actually change all the information and get it all working within an hour I did that video right um, so let's have a look what these look like I've got them set to Photoshop so you can see it's a little milky if you want to play around with Photoshop it's only 16 images just you know it's it's not too bad in quality you can see there's the parallel runway done but you can see it's got that milky haze to it you might want to give it a bit more contrast a bit more you know maybe maybe tone down the brightness and give it a bit more contrast but you can see you uh, look you can tell COVID times can't you um, and you can see it's all it's all pretty good you know nice uh, range of containers and then you've got your you know it, it looks good I mean Mapbox does a wonderful job <laughs> Me, I wouldn't do photo reel until, well, until we're out of COVID, when the planes are flying again, because uh, you're really going to be giving yourself a lot of work <laughs> if you're going to get rid of all those aircraft, you know. Um, and that's what it is. If it's a big airport, if it's a military airport, you won't have this, this problem. And if you use the cloning tool, you can clone most of that away anyway. Um, I've also got a video on that. Uh, but yeah, you can see the quality is very good for that box but up close it's um it's you know it gets a bit milky you know but it's not bad i mean me i get rid of all the cars so and i use uh, like an animated car that comes with the program with another program that i use um yeah so that's basically how you use this program in a nutshell so 
if you need any uh, lessons or you've got any inquiries, just hit me up at flightsimdev.com and um, yeah, just go from there. Just um, use the email there and get through to me and just ask me some um, questions and I'll see if I can answer them the best I can. I usually, you know, check the emails like every day so you'll probably get an answer back within the next 24 hours or after the message and um, I'll leave the video there but as I say if you have any questions either leave them in the comments below if you thought this video was at any type helpful um, give me that thumbs up uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this I do bring them out but I haven't done anything for a while since COVID really started and um, yeah, we'll catch you in the next video. Okay, cheers for now.